each of the four Sundays of Advent, we light a candle on our Advent wreath to remind us of those who prepared for the coming of Christ. On this first Sunday, we focus on the patriarchs, including Abraham, our father in faith, and David, the ancestor in whose city Jesus was born. God of Abraham and Sarah, and all the patriarchs of old, you are our father too. Your love is revealed to us in Jesus Christ, son of God and son of David. Help us in preparing to celebrate his birth to make our hearts ready for your Holy Spirit, to make his home among us. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the light who is coming into the world. Amen. Lord Jesus, light of the world, born in David's city of Bethlehem, born like him to be a king, be born in our hearts at Christmas, be king of our lives today. Amen. The Collect Prayer for Advent Sunday Almighty God, as your kingdom dawns, turn us from the darkness of sin to the light of holiness, that we may be ready to meet you in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. 1 Corinthians 1, chapters 3 to 9. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given in you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge and every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Lord Jesus our Lord.
The Gospel reading is from St. Mark chapter 13. Jesus said, In those days the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give us its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in heaven will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. But about that day or hour no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you... I say to all, keep awake. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Today is Advent Sunday, a day to think about journeys. The first journey is one which lasts about four weeks. It's the journey towards the birth of a unique child, Jesus Christ, Son of Mary, Son of God. Mary and Joseph's journey to Bethlehem was a journey that was both physical and spiritual. They had to prepare themselves for the responsibility of not only becoming parents, but parents of Emmanuel, God with us. They had to prepare themselves for the roles God had for them in the plan of salvation for the world. The second journey is one which lasts for 52 weeks. Advent Sunday is the start of the Christian year. God's story begins again with the preparations for Christ's birth and will continue throughout the next 12 months, encompassing Lent and Easter and Pentecost and all the significant events which make up the story of God and not only of God, but of our place in that story. Just as Mary and Joseph rediscovered their places in God's story, so the next year we rediscover our own places in that same story. The third journey is one that we don't know how long it will last. This is a journey which will end when Jesus comes again, to use St Mark's words, with great power and glory. It is the journey of humanity, the constant journey to seek and to find God. The journey which will end with the creation of the new heaven and the new earth, and the end of all suffering. Not even Jesus knew how long this journey lasts. About that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. It's likely to be a lifelong journey, one in which Jesus emphasises the importance of being ready. As he says in the Gospel, keep alert, keep awake, keep awake. All these journeys begin again today. And all three are journeys which we are either already joining in with, or if not, are invited to join in with. So let's consider the question, how do we join in these three Advent journeys? We do so first and foremost by remembering that these are spiritual journeys. They are journeys which involve at their heart our relationship with God. Whilst nurturing this relationship is of course something we do the whole year round, Advent, along with Lent, is a time to especially focus on our journeys with God. 
And so this Advent, just as Paul advised the Corinthians, make that special effort to deepen your relationship with God. As an example, here is something which I am doing to deepen my own relationship with God. When clergy are first ordained, we make several promises, two of which are particularly relevant to this season of Advent. We promise to be diligent in prayer, in reading Holy Scripture, and in all studies that will deepen our faith. And we promise to, in the strength of the Holy Spirit, grow in holiness and grace. These are serious promises, and clergy need to constantly remind ourselves of them and ask ourselves what we're doing to keep them. And so I am joining a spiritual community of priests called the Sodality of Mary. This community is one where priests both support each other and hold each other to account as we live out our calling to serve our parishes. So let me be clear, I'm not moving. This is a spiritual community that we meet with online now and again, but we don't actually join a physical community. The community contains, amongst its intentions, the desire to grow in holiness by sharing in a pious association of prayer and devotion. And I hope that you will see me grow in holiness over time. There is a particular identification with Mary, the one who brought Jesus into a waiting world, which is of course what I seek to do through my own priestly ministry. And the community has a detailed rule of life, which contains many promises of what we will do as we try to increase in holiness. I will be admitted into this community on December the 8th and will be grateful for your prayers on that day. This is how I intend to deepen my relationship with God. It begins this Advent. The journey will last for the rest of my life on earth. And so now I ask, how will you deepen your relationship with God this Advent? There is, of course, no single way. We must each find the spiritual resources that work best for us. We, your clergy, have provided the Advent Reflection Booklet, a daily prayer activity to use throughout this season. And this is for your spiritual journey if you find it useful. If you have received one and would like a copy, please do get in touch. The prayers will also be posted daily on our Facebook pages. There are many other ways to deepen your relationship with God. You very likely already know what works for you. We have the Advent course beginning this Tuesday evening. There are many devotional books available. Resources for children are abundant on the internet. If you're not sure what's right for you, and you would like to find something, then please do talk to us and together we can find the right thing for you and your spirituality. Advent is a wonderful time of year, full of hope and joy and anticipation. Next Sunday, we will worship again in church. Whether you are able to be there or not, I wish you a blessed Advent and a deepening of your journey of faith as you too draw close to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our heart through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. 
Amen. So let us pray. You sent your Son to bring good news to the poor, sight to the blind, freedom to captives and salvation to your people. Anoint us with your Spirit, rouse us to work in his name. Father, by your Spirit, bring in your kingdom. Send us to bring help to the poor and freedom to the oppressed. Father, by your Spirit, bring in your kingdom. Send us to tell the world the good news of your healing love. Father, by your Spirit, bring in your kingdom. Send us to those who mourn, to bring joy and gladness instead of grief. Father, by your Spirit, bring in your kingdom. Send us to proclaim that the time is here for you to save your people. Father, by your Spirit, bring in your kingdom. God of mercy, you know us and love us and hear our prayer. Keep us in the eternal fellowship of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Awaiting his coming in glory, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you. Scatter the darkness from before your path and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and all those you love, now and for evermore. Amen. Our Lord says, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. May the Lord, when he comes, find us watching and waiting. Amen. <laughs>